The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of WLMB TV 40 Toledo. I was back at home keeping the home fires burning, the business going, and God revealed amazing things to me in that period of time. I remember when I was sitting up at the pond and I was seeking him and he just came to me in a very, very real way and said, there's going to be some really great things happening, exciting things happening, and it's all going to be okay. Just let me direct your path. Welcome you to another episode of Main Street, the fastest half hour on television. I'm Dr. Jamie Schmitz. Of course, I'm joined by my co-host for the past 22 years, almost more, year, more years than you can count, Virginia Bosset. <laughs> I don't know about that, Jamie. But, you know, we have a great show today. We you know, do. God's Word tells us to go into the world and preach the gospel. Well, you know, our... Go into all, all the, the world. world. And sometimes evangelical Christians can be a bit parochial, but we're not going to be parochial today, are we, Virginia? That's right. That's we right. have a couple who has done some amazing work in Africa, and so we're going to hear their story. The name of uh, the, the, the group... Wonderful that, ministry. Yes. Yes. The ministry that they founded is called Rock Ford. So I we love it. <laughs> we that, is, that gives you some action. There we go. Yes. We're rocking forward. <laughs> we want to welcome Ron and Kathy King. Thank you so much for joining us You're today. So welcome. Two of my very most favorite people in the whole wide world. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> I meant, meant <laughs> Thank you. So Ron Thank and you. Kathy, warm, warm welcome to Main Street. Thank you so much for being with so us. Welcome. We know a little bit about ourselves, about yourselves, but uh, our viewers don't. So Kathy, would you go first and tell us a little bit about yourselves, your ministry, and uh, and and Ron, I'm going to ask you a follow up and say why you're so passionate about Rock Forward. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so, so much for inviting us to be here today. It's just such a privilege and an honor to share our ministry, share our heart's passion, and so thank you. Ron and I have actually been married for 45 years, if you can believe it or not. Bravo! <laughs> yes, yes, great 45 years. Uh, we have four of our own children, and now we have 14 grandchildren. Oh, congratulations. And we're loving wow, this. Wow, talk about more than you can count. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number right there. We're loving this season of life. Our oldest grandchild is a senior at Indiana Wesleyan, and our youngest is two years old in Virginia. So oh, we wow. have a wide gamut, and we're, we have so much fun with them. So. Yeah, it's it's great. That's wonderful, wonderful news. And Ron, why are you, why are you two so passionate about this ministry? That well, you God found laid it? it on our hearts, Jamie, uh, and that's really all we can say is we felt God calling us. And and uh, maybe a, a little later on in the show, I'll show you how God called us to that ministry. Um, never thought I would go to Africa. That was like the place I was not going to go. But God laid it on our heart, and I finally said, "Okay, if that's where you want us, that's where I'll go." So that's kind of the basis of, of how the whole thing was founded. So, well, maybe share with us then why, you know, and how Rock Forward got started. Okay, that's a, that's a great question. I was actually in Hong Kong uh, with some pastors, uh, ministers, um, missionaries, and business people, how to fulfill the Great Commission. And on the last night, the, the speaker said, I want you all to walk the big map on the floor. It was about the size of a football field. And listen to God, where, where God might call you. And um, so I did that all by myself, and I walked that map, and I ended up in Africa, and I thought, mm, I don't think so, God. I don't think Africa is where I should be. And so I walked away, I came back, and I did that about four times. Finally, on the fourth time, I said, okay, God, I surrender. If that's where you want us, hmm. that's where I'll go. And um, I came home, I just told my wife that, I don't know, God's doing something. I don't know what he's doing. But that all laid st uh, still for about two years, didn't it? It did. And then um, our church uh, went on an exploratory trip into Mali, West Africa, and invited Kathy and I to go, and uh, we fell in love with the people. And uh, we knew then that there was a connection between our hearts and, and the African hearts. And again, that laid still for about two years. And uh, two years after that then, one of the relationships I met in Hong Kong found a screen printer in Africa, which is what we do at our business, and said, I think you should call Ron King from Archibald, Ohio. I think he could help you. 
and uh, that was that's what birthed the whole uh, activity. So let me get this straight. I heard a uh, two years, two years, and two years. Uh, Kathy, I want to go back to you. When he came to you and said, hey, you know, I believe the Lord is working our my life, which means our life, because two shall become one. That's one of the best <laughs> things about marriage, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but when he said that to you, uh, what was your reaction to that? Was it kind of like, oh, ho-hum, here it comes around with another, <laughs> you know, uh, pie in the sky dream? Or did it really speak to your heart as well? It really spoke to my heart as well. While he was all the way over in Hong Kong, I was back at home keeping the home fires burning, the business going, and God revealed amazing things to me in that period of time. I remember when I was sitting out at the pond and I was just seeking him and he just came to me in a very, very real way and say, there's gonna be some really great things happening, exciting things happening, and it's all gonna be okay. Just let me direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. And I just knew he was directing Ron. Ron was a leader of our family. I was very confident in the fact that we were being led into a ministry that we didn't know anything about yet. So, but but God we, was were gonna, yeah. we were together. We were very, very together. much together. So and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 really spoke it to It really you. spoke yeah. to me. Always has. So, it's been one of my favorite verses. So that was the first two, then the second two, then the third two years. And isn't that like the Lord? Sometime he puts something, births something in our hearts. Yes. But it's kind of a, can be a long season. Yes. You know, two Sweet. years is no short Sweet. period. But uh, after that second, two, second and third two-year period, uh, because you were in the screen printing business, uh, was that really an open gate to be able to minister to people in these African countries? Yeah, so I, I really should go back to the first trip to Mali. Um, the first night we arrived in Mali, we were going to a guest house, and I remember uh, about a half a block away from where we were staying, there was a sign, uh, a sign company, and we do signs as well. And so I said to our leader, I really want to go see that guy. I want to go talk to the guy. And he said, Ron, we just got here. You can't do that. No, just relax. You know, we're going to settle in. And and uh, if people know me, I'm pretty persistent. And he reluctantly said, okay, go. And so I went down there and about 45 minutes later, uh, I, I returned. But while I was there, I saw business as missions come to life. And this man took me behind his, his curtain. He showed me his equipment. He showed me his business. I shared with him my business. And he asked me to come and visit his tribe. I didn't know what that meant. So I went I wouldn't know what that meant. That's <laughs> very interesting. So I went back to yeah. our to our, our compound and there were missionaries staying there for a retreat. And I said to them, uh, this guy just invited me to their tribe, to his tribe. And they looked at me and they said, We've been trying for seven years to get invited to his tribe. Really? Wow. So that really concreted in my heart that businesses missions will work. So what kind of businesses you know came to fruition? from when going into Africa. So then my first business in Africa was a screen printer and he needed a piece of equipment. We helped him secure that. And I said, you know, I'll come help you hook that up. And those are very key words because he couldn't understand why a white American would come to Africa to help them. Mm -hmm. And so we developed that through social media, through, through Skype, we, we Skyped a lot. And um, we had a relationship before I hit the ground. When I hit the ground, we hugged like he was my son and I was his dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, just this afternoon be, uh, before I came here, he, he called me. He said, Dad, how are you doing today, Dad? <laughs> and, and he showed me his kids and his family. And so we still, after all these years, have a tremendous relationship. And so you're like his dad, his spiritual father, too. And they call her mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you have funny. this screen printing business going, and then what happens after that? So I actually took some of our employees over, right? Because we think our business is a mission field as well. So we took some of our employees and it changed their hearts forever as well. So uh, we saw it on both sides. Um, there were some good things that came out of that first trip. And then we did another trip. I think there were like three trips. And I came home and I knew that this was bigger than Ron and Kathy. And um, some of our best friends are Matt and Lanita Boyers. And I went to Matt and I said, Matt, would you consider coming to Africa? This is bigger. God is moving here. I don't know what's up with this. And that's when we invited Matt to come along with us. Very good. So let me go back to the screen printing business. Uh, so uh, when you are taking screen printing to Africa, 
you know, we have a pretty good idea why you need that here in the United States, but when we think of Africa, we don't necessarily think of screen printing. We think of basic necessities, food, clothing, and shelter. How was that the perfect fit for that particular situation, and why did it take off? Uh, that worked well until the economy crashed, and so that business has now shut down, but he told me today, Dad, I want to start up a screen printing business. So it's still in just his, today. Just today. I love it. Still in his DNA. He still wants to do business, um, but their economy is is in a tough place right now. And they did more. They did more than just screen printing too. He would employ um, moms that didn't really have anything to do to be able to provide for their children, and they would come in and they would actually make the T-shirts. So they were cutting and they were, you know, had patterns. And so he was teaching that as well as just Sewing, screen printing. Sewing, designing. Yeah, okay. yeah it was a lot of value added business within that one business. And this business then grew into other businesses. Um, it branched, in, it led us into different areas yeah. such as um, little gardens, um, chickens, meat chickens. Um, yeah, there you'll see actually one of a, uh, we, we put a well in for this lady, our organization put a well in with a drip irrigation and this family couldn't feed their family. Um, so they call it Zero, 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 which means they had no meals today, or zero, one, zero, zero, which means they had one meal. These people were eating one meal a day, and you can see with a little bit of teaching and a little bit of uh, finances what it can do. They now have all the vegetables they want to eat. They're selling the excess and now are, are profitable as a small business. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, and to see all those plants that are now feeding yeah. people yeah. in Western Africa is just amazing. Yeah. Our programming, though, has a lot of training with it. Um, everybody that has interest and opportunity of, in business has to go through a 12-week training period where we have someone over there in Zimbabwe, Africa, employed full-time, actually, um, a native person that will teach them God's way of doing business. So he teaches them accounting and he teaches them marketing and he teaches all the aspects of business and each one of those training periods has the gospel in it. So they're in, the gospel is being taught all the time throughout this training period. And so if they graduate from those, then that is when they are qualified to be funded by Rock Forward. So all of those assessments are done by that, the, our employee over there, his name is Tendai, amazing, wonderful Christian man, one of our very dearest friends over there. Um, and he's doing a great job with that. But that's how the businesses actually get started and then they're assessed and funded that way. And then they're holding each other accountable and they have support and they have encouragement from one another. And he goes in from time to time and continues to encourage and continues to assess and maybe gives them more funding as their business grows, that kind of thing. Yeah. So and what, what countries are you active in today? We're active in Zimbabwe, a little bit of work in Malawi, but we'll, uh, we'll so when we started this, Jamie, we, we were going to um, start the business and then bring the church in. Well. God has a different plan, right? So God now is bringing the church in and we're following the church and we can talk more about that later if you want to. Yes, well actually speaking of the church, I know that we do have a special guest that we're gonna introduce you know, after this break, but we wanna thank you know, Kathy for joining us because she's gonna step aside and the special guest is gonna come in and we're gonna talk more about Rock Ford and the church planting that has been happening. And, and so we're excited to hear more about this when we come back. Our partners have said it won't be a problem to plant eight or 10 churches a year, but to keep them, keep discipleship moving forward and sustainable businesses that the people of those communities can then support the pastors of those churches, that's gonna be really critical. We're talking about Rock Ford, a ministry that is in Africa. And joining us today, well, we have Ron King, who is founder with his wife. And we talked to Ron and Kathy in the beginning of the show. But now we want to introduce Matt Boyer's pastor over there at Crossroads Church, right? Yes. Well, welcome. We're so uh, honored to have you here today. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. Appreciate the opportunity to talk about something that we're both really passionate about. Yeah. Now, Pastor Matt, uh, Please share with us uh, your role with Rock Forward and how did you get involved? We uh, have a board as a, a governing board and I'm the chair of that board at Ron's Invitation some years ago. And I got involved, I had been to Africa really on a church planting adventure more in the northern part of the, or really central north part of the continent. And we had a daughter who lived in Kenya so we'd had some time there and Ron oh. and Kathy 
ended up in Zimbabwe and we knew they had traveled there uh, for at least twice and invited us to come down and I'd kind of had a heart uh, an opening heart I guess for the African peoples at that point and so our friendship we've been friends for a long long time so we thought this would be a good way to celebrate that friendship and do some ministry together so we joined them and went to Zimbabwe for kind of an exploratory trip all right well, we'll call you Mr. Chairman then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you talked about that you have this passion for Africa. So why are you passionate about Rock Forward? Yeah. What originally excited me about Rock Forward in the African continent, um, as a pastor, we, a big part of my responsibility and my passion here in the States is to train young leaders and then to send them out to plant churches. Mm. And my hope was, boy, maybe if we get over there, we'll meet some people. Maybe there'll be an opportunity to, so, to do some leadership development and support church planting in the African continent. So that was kind of in the back of my mind, but I thought, we'll just go, we'll see what things are like. And uh, it, it did lead to that within just a couple years, really. But I remember the first time that you actually landed there and you saw some of the business groups that it resonated with you that this, this will work, this does connect. And yeah. that was fun to see, you know, when you, when you, that's really was my passion to have him come along and catch the vision and I could feel that he caught the vision almost the first day that he was there. So. And the African continent has, has been well evangelized by Western missionaries for over 100 years. But uh, part of the issue now is supporting these churches so that they can be sustainable. And our, my passion is to work through indigenous or national native leaders as opposed to sending Western missionaries there. And so the idea of seeing the, the businesses was like, maybe this can help make the churches sustainable and persevering there. And indeed, that's the strategy now, and uh, that's why we're so excited about it. Yeah, and I think that's really important that, uh, you know, Ron and Kathy really went there as kind of, uh, you know, missionaries from the United States uh, to really help train up uh, the nationals there so they can support themselves. I mean, I think that's something that's often uh, missed uh, when we uh, try to do missionary work, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, the people, it's best for them to be involved in their own culture mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, to provide leadership in their own communities. Yeah. We've actually had people tell us in Africa, <clears throat> don't just give us money, come teach us. Teach us how to a uh, skill so that we can, you know, survive and we can teach our family. So yeah, it takes money, but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for us as a, um, Americans to walk alongside of them and train them. So mm -hmm. what does that church planting process look like? Well, it starts with training leaders and identifying leaders. So we have uh, several partners there that we work with. One is a bishop who's a head of a denomination, a small denomination, and he works to create partnerships with Bible colleges and training institutions. And that those kind of become fishing ponds, if you will, to identify potential church planters and pastors. And once those are identified, then two, really three of our partners, who one man who does the business training, uh, the bishop, and another fellow who's had a lot of experience planting churches, they give them specialized training for church planting. And then they're sent out, um, two church planters at a time. They go with our partner who uh, plants, and they go out in the bush and they plant churches. And they've told us planting churches is relatively easy in these rural areas, if you make a little music and uh, gather some folks, mm -hmm. people come and they preach the gospel, people come to Christ, and then really the challenge is discipleship and sustainable discipleship. So two of those planters are left there and they do the work and then uh, the man who's our partner who trains them and works with them, he goes back and checks up every few months and does kind of on the spot training and encouragement. And uh, then after a year or so, uh, kind of the apprentice planter is sent to another location with another person and they plant another church there. Okay. At what point uh, is business development part of that church planting yeah. uh, environment? Originally, we kind of thought maybe six months, even a year after the church was planted. We didn't really want the the people in the villages to associate the church with business opportunity. Sure. But we found rather quickly that it has to be a much shorter time period. So. As Ron mentioned earlier, the pastors themselves are trained in the same business principles that other entrepreneurs are trained in. And so now we're to the point within a few months, we need to get our people there to train potential entrepreneurs in how to start these businesses. 
Very good. So and it helps build that community, that Christian community. Yeah. Uh, give our viewers some idea maybe about the breadth of the different types of businesses that are planted, mm. you know, that come alongside. Well, they're not large businesses like we might think of here in the States. Um, it could be six chickens, could be a dozen chickens. It could be um, a mushroom, a little mushroom house, uh, which we've seen very successful now. Um, but uh, chickens are, I would say, would be the, the, the big thing right now. In some places, these businesses almost come together and form a little micro economy, which is really exciting to see. One area that we visited last year, there's a guy who's a welder. And he welded up some windows for a local school. And then there's another guy who's in the, we call them business savings groups. These, these little businesses get together and they encourage one another. And he was a glass guy. And so he supplied the glass for the windows that the welder made that went to the school. And one of the teachers at the school has a little uh, sewing business and she made uniforms for the school. And then there was another fellow that had a little, remember he sold ice cream there and just his little shop. And the painter where, was involved. And the in painter that. was involved. Ice um, cream. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not one you usually uh, think of. Well, <laughs> the novelties, wasn't, uh, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, they just become this little, uh, like I said, a micro economy. And so it's really a beautiful thing to see. And they are so proud of their businesses and they'll show us their business plan and their, their accounting, their bookkeeping, which oftentimes is in a spiral notebook. But it's a wonderful thing to see the opportunity that they have been given and how they leverage that. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, business groups um, and that they're working together. And so I, I know that, um, you know, Ron, previously we had talked about the cost of these groups. Um, you know, how does that all work in time and resources? Yeah, so I think it's $2,500, is it, to start a group of about four or five businesses now. And so, you know, you had mentioned that Ron and Kathy are missionaries to, to Africa. So what I love about this is we can be missionaries and still hold our full-time job here in the States. And that's what we're really looking for our viewers to, to maybe grasp a hold of that, um, where their small group or some of the, their family could sponsor uh, some business savings group and then get involved with them and, and nurture them and, and Skype with them, encourage them, and then maybe even come along sometime with a trip. Yeah. And, and the way the it works is if you have a small group at your church that wants to sponsor a business savings group, um, you are connected with them and you get their contact information. You can actually communicate with them. And then Western donors uh, give um, some funding, that $2,500, and then the business group there, they're accountable to manage those dollars so they hold one another accountable and that really becomes their capital with which they build their businesses so it's really an exciting yeah. thing one donor here for that kind of money can see four or five sustainable businesses launched so yeah. they'll set up their secretary a chairman if you know they'll set up their own little committee and they'll charge themselves let's say us four are in a group we might agree that we're gonna charge ourselves 200 percent interest to put back into our fund so our little nucleus cell group can grow, right? So they determine that. We've heard as high as 200% they charge each other interest. <laughs> How'd you like that, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> Not too well. <laughs> but uh, it is really interesting because basically you are, you know, planting a church, people are being evangelized in discipleship, but also having micro businesses launched that uh, really when we think of things in terms of the United States, um, we kind of forget the fact that, you know, in an African country, it's not unusual for a person to earn a dollar a day. Mm. So $365 a year is maybe what the average African um, is able to, yeah. you know, bring into his household. So giving someone uh, or, or really getting a business going, you're not re really, you know, uh, with all these micro lending going on as well, you know, six chickens can make the difference. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, a family has no chickens and goes to six chickens, but six chickens become 12 chickens, become eggs, yeah. becomes, yeah. you know, and it's just a wonderful thing. And, and it's a way that we can go into all the world and preach the gospel mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and yeah. show the love of Christ. Yeah. Uh, so it's a wonderful picture that um, both of you are involved in, well, thank of course, you. Kathy. Well, you know, we have a couple minutes left in today's show. I know it has gone fast, but maybe you could share with us, you know, what is your vision for Rock Forward? Mm -hmm. Wow, it just seems like this church thing has exploded. 
And I think the passion for us to, to keep up with the growth of what Christ is asking us to do takes a lot of money, right? And so we would love to come and speak to any of our viewers or church groups or any organization and just share uh, maybe a little more in depth than what we have here today with you all. Um, and, and there's been that vision. There's been six churches planted in a year and a half. That's awesome. In extreme rural areas, some of them. And so now those leaders are being trained. And so our partners have said, it won't be a problem to plant eight or 10 churches a year, mm. but to keep them, keep discipleship moving forward and sustainable businesses that the people of those communities can then support the pastors of those churches, that's gonna be really critical. So we think we're, we have partners, or at least contacts, in six different nations in Southern Africa, and it really getting ready to see churches planted in, all, in, that, in the entire region. And our vision mm -hmm. is to go to the rural areas. It's not glorious, yeah. glamorous to go there, and so you don't see a lot of people going to the rural areas. And we're saying, it's right, the harvest is right. You're making a huge impact there. Well, how can people find out more about Rock Forward? Perhaps, you know, get involved if you guys have mentioned or have you come and speak? I think probably the easiest way would go to our website, rockforward.org. Um, there's a phone number there. They can get a hold of, of my wife, Kathy, or myself, and we'll, we'll go from there. We'll set up appointments and love to meet with people. As you can see, we're passionate about what God has called us to do. Yeah, and it's a really pragmatic and practical way for people in the U.S. church to help yeah. start international yeah. churches. Yeah. So uh, I'm encouraging people to get on the phone, go to the website, and to contact you. What a wonderful way to get involved in That'd international missions. Thanks right. for the opportunity to tell about it today. Yeah. Well, All right. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Thank you, Ron. Very welcome. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you for joining us today on Main Street. I hope that uh, you will search your heart and see what God would have you to do to go out and share the gospel this week. Thank you for joining us on Main Street. Be sure to join us next week for another great episode. We hope that Main Street has been a blessing to you today. Please feel free to contact the following to learn more about the topics discussed on today's show. WLMB would like to thank all the faithful supporters of WLMB that make this program possible. Main Street is a production of WLMB TV 40 in Toledo, all rights reserved.